Kyrie Irving has officially requested a trade. Believes that he deserved, a, you know, a fully guaranteed contract. It is February 3rd. Wow. They have six days to deal with this guy. I was about to leave my house, and right as I was about to leave my house to hit the gym. Yes, I hit the gym. We got some breaking news in regards to Kyrie Irving. This, this has been verified by Adrian Wojnarowski, Shams the Riz God Sharanya, and even Adam Schefter. So before we get to the content, my football channel microphone that was made years after my flight mic channel is catching up to us and subscribers, make sure you subscribe so my football channel channel doesn't catch up to my basketball channel they're about 10,000 subs away now that we get all that out of the way cue the intro Usually when this happens, we all make bank. PrizePix is hooking us up for the Super Bowl with a free square from Patrick Mahomes, which means Mahomes just needs one passing yard in order for his square to convert. So all you have to do if you wanna join is go to the link in the description down below, download PrizePix and use my promo code microphone so they can match up to $100 of your deposit. And once you're done with that, make these picks. Obviously you should go with the Patrick Mahomes 0.5 passing yards and click more. Once you're done with that, one of my sleepers is going to be Kenneth Gainwell, who has been a monster throughout the playoffs for the Philadelphia Eagles, and he just needs to get higher than 21.5 rush yards. So we're going to click more there. And if Kenneth Gainwell gets more than 21.5 rush yards, you could 3x your money. Now, if you feel really good about this, you could also add Travis Kelsey scoring one touchdown. And if both of these hit, you 5x your money. I play prize picks each and every day, and I post my picks to my story on Instagram. Instagram. So make sure you're following me there if you want to see my picks on a daily basis. And thank you, Prize Picks for the sponsor. Mike check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? This news that we have on Kyrie Irving is insane. And it all started with Kyrie Irving reaffirming his commitment to the Brooklyn Nets. Now, if you paid attention, historically, every time Kyrie Irving has affirmed his commitment to a team, he's left shortly after. This happened at every single stop of his career so far. When he was with the Cleveland Cavaliers, we had this lovely incident that happened where Kyrie Irving pretty much lied to a child. Are you going to leave us like LeBron left us. <laughs> it's, a, it's a great question. Um, no, I won't leave. I'm not leaving. How can I leave you guys? And then of course, if you're a Boston Celtics fan, you remember this lovely gem of a video where Kyrie Irving told the entire fan base at TD Garden that he shared it with some of my teammates as well as the organization and everyone else in Boston. If you guys will have me back, I plan on re-signing here next year. And then finally, we got this report from Chris B. Haynes that said, Kyrie Irving is seeking a contract extension. His agent, Chetalia Irving, tells Bleacher Report, the desire is to make Brooklyn home the right type of extension, which means the ball's in the Nets court to communicate if their desire is the same. <laughs> it's a little different this time. You see, the Brooklyn Nets have always had a very tumultuous history with Kyrie Irving. And it's a very interesting one because if this was any other team, they would say, well, hurt the door, you're Kyrie Irving. You're a perennial all-star. You're one of the most entertaining individuals to ever touch a basketball on the court. We're gonna max you out and we're gonna make sure that you feel welcome and we'll even have your back during any type of off the court situation that you might be going through, but not the Brooklyn Nets. It seems like the Brooklyn Nets and Kyrie Irving never could get on the same page. Do you remember what Sean Marks said during his exit interview last year in regards to potentially retaining Kyrie Irving? Um, we haven't had any of those discussions yet, so it'd be unfair for me to comment on you know, how it looks with, with us and Kyrie, because to be quite frank, he has some decisions to make on his own. So he has to look um, at what he's gonna do with his player option and so forth like that. But I think we know what we're looking for. You know, we're looking for guys that wanna come in here, be part of something bigger than themselves, um, play selfless, play team basketball, uh, and be available. And that goes not only for Kyrie, but for, for everybody here. The Nets have historically always been unwilling to offer Kyrie Irving an extension. Most teams will do anything it takes to keep Kyrie Irving, but the Brooklyn Nets kind of make a reasonable argument. During the first three seasons of Kyrie Irving's Brooklyn Nets career, he's played in less games than he did in two full seasons with the Boston Celtics. Currently, at the time that we're making this video, if you include this season, Kyrie Irving has played for the Brooklyn Nets in 143 games. He's played for the Boston Celtics in 100 and 
127 games. We're comparing two seasons to four seasons here, although one of the seasons aren't complete. So the Brooklyn Nets rationale is Kyrie just doesn't come into work. And this is where player empowerment kind of turns into player entitlement, in my opinion. And here's how, just hear me out. In year one with the Brooklyn Nets, Kyrie Irving played in just 20 games. That year, I think was the most reasonable year for him not to play a full season. It was a year that he was dealing with injuries. He was on a new team. The Brooklyn Nets were still trying to figure out their head coaching situation and Kevin Durant wasn't playing. If there was a year to take time off to focus on your injuries, it was in year one. And I respected that. It made a lot of sense. At the time, if you even dig up my old videos, I would say in my old content that Kyrie Irving has nothing to play for right now and he should just shut it down for this season so he could potentially chase a championship when Kevin Durant comes back. In year two, he played in 54 games, but he took a lot of time off just for personal reasons, to hang out with family and stuff like that. And the Brooklyn Nets were cool with it. And the Brooklyn Nets actually had the most promise and had their best finish of any season in year two. Fortunately, it resulted in Kyrie Irving and James Harden dealing with injuries, but the Brooklyn Nets really showed Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving that they were all in on building a contender around them. In year three, that's when things got bad. Kyrie Irving was dealing with vaccination problems and he couldn't play basketball games because of vaccine mandates. And of course, there was the incident that he had earlier this year, which I'm not gonna get into, but when you take all of these incidents and add them up together, yeah, one-off incidents like Kyrie Irving getting injured or Kyrie Irving needing time off to spend with family makes a lot of sense. But at a specific point, one of these incidents were the straw that broke the camel's back. And what's interesting is, despite Kyrie missing all of this time, could you just imagine if you paid an employee to work and your employee isn't coming into work for a myriad of reasons, some being reasonable, by the way, or is getting suspended or is dealing with injuries. And then he comes up to you right when his contract is up and says, yeah, I think I deserve a maximum contract extension. Obviously, this rubbed the Brooklyn Nets the wrong way. I think a lot of teams would happily pay that price for Kyrie Irving, not the Brooklyn Nets. And I think that's where the issue arose because Kyrie Irving recently said that he wants to stay with the Brooklyn Nets. That's clearly not happening. I think it's time for these two sides to part ways. Although it's very fascinating because the Brooklyn Nets once again have a very promising season going for them. They're currently the fourth seed in the East at the time that I'm making this video. So... Any team that would trade for him, in my opinion, I mean, there's only one team that comes to mind, would be a pretty big downgrade. Now, before we go any further, let me bring you guys the official report from Riz God Shams Charania. According to Shams Charania, breaking the Brooklyn Nets all-star, Kyrie Irving has requested a trade. League sources tell The Athletic and The Stadium. The franchise has been informed that Irving prefers to move on ahead of the February 9th trade deadline, or he will leave in free agency in July. Bro, Shams really is a Riz God because honestly, I'm making the same type of face that Kay Adams did in their interview together. Because earlier today, we got multiple reports from the Los Angeles Lakers saying that one, they're no longer trying to preserve cap space for 2023 free agency. According to John Hollinger of The Athletic, the Lakers already gave us a partial answer to the existential question when they traded three second round picks to Washington for Rui Hachimura. Most of my league sources given anonymity so they could speak freely, peg this as a 2023 free agency move more than an in-season roster makeover. And if so, it could be a signal that LA intends to keep pushing in chips rather than accumulate 2023 cap space. Another report we got earlier today from the honorable and awesome Chris B. Haynes is that the Los Angeles Lakers know they need to make another trade. Conversations were had with the Utah Jazz centered on Russell Westbrook. A part of me is wondering if LeBron James went over to Kyrie and said, hey, there's a way we could get you over here if you demand a trade right now. But my question is, why would Kyrie want to go from a team that is currently the fourth seed in the East to a team that's currently the 12th seed in the West? Now, obviously the Lakers 12th seed isn't truly a 12th seed. I mean, if you look at the standings, the Lakers aren't that far behind the Mavericks or the Suns or the Timberwolves. I mean, there is a path to the top three if they are able to get their roster together and they are able to figure things out. But it seems like as a result of this report, you could see the Los Angeles Lakers entering the chat. So that begs the question, what are the teams that are the most likely to trade for Kyrie Irving? Well, according to Adrian Wojnarowski, Brooklyn's Kyrie Irving has not shared a list of preferred teams, but he maintained an interest in the Lakers. 
LA is expected to be among the teams that'll explore a possible trade with the Nets. We're gonna talk about the Lakers a little bit later on in this video. I wanna give each and every team that could potentially trade for Kyrie Irving their love. The Dallas Mavericks are also a top contender whenever it comes to trading for Kyrie Irving. According to Adrian Wojnarowski, the Mavericks have had previous interest on Kyrie Irving and are expected to explore the idea with the Nets ahead of Thursday's trade deadline. Like most teams, the Mavericks have had a reluctance to make significant offers of assets for Kyrie Irving. Now, Tim McMahon quotes this and says, Mavs GM Nico Harrison, a former Nike executive and coach Jason Kidd, have longstanding relationships with Kyrie Irving. Dallas desperately needs a co-star alongside Luka Doncic. So the big questions are, how much are the Mavericks willing to give up and would they make a long-term commitment? Apparently the Philadelphia 76ers will not be making any Kyrie Irving inquiries because the organization doesn't have any interest. Good on them. I think they're a little traumatized from the Ben Simmons drama that they had to deal with over the past year. And according to Brian Windhorst, the Lakers aren't so sure about trading for Kyrie Irving and giving him a $200 million contract at season's end. So if you're a Laker fan, the first thing I wanna ask you is, would you rather trade for Kyrie Irving now and give up assets and future picks and salary cap flexibility? Cause you're probably gonna have to take on the contract of Joe Harris to make Kyrie Irving's contract work with Russell Westbrook. It's not gonna be Russell Westbrook for Kyrie Irving straight up cause Kyrie makes significantly less than Russell Westbrook. It's gonna probably be Kyrie Irving and like Joe Harris for Russell Westbrook, Lonnie Walker, and a first round pick. Is that something you'd be interested in as a Laker fan? I do think at this point, this is it for Kyrie Irving. I mean, in the off season, Kyrie Irving was almost out the door. They didn't want to sign him to an extension then. So he opted into his player option because there wasn't really anywhere that he could sign in free agency. You remember there was those rumors that suggested that Kyrie could potentially take a significantly lesser contract, maybe even the mid-level exception for a year to play for the Los Angeles Lakers but he didn't end up doing that because why would he? He would take a significant pay cut if he did do that. So he opted into his player option and played this year. And to his credit, when he has played this year in 40 games, he's been remarkable. He's averaged 27 points per game. He's been shooting 49% from the field, 37% from three. He's the same Kyrie Irving we all know and love and the same type of player that has been incredible throughout his entire career. But still, there's no contract extension. Kyrie has also felt kind of betrayed because the Brooklyn the Nets haven't necessarily had his back throughout all of his obstacles during his tenure with the Brooklyn Nets. But when Kyrie Irving opted in, Kevin Durant demanded a trade and things just got messy from there. Kevin Durant then realized that there's no way he could leave the Brooklyn Nets. I mean, how could he? So now they're in this situation where Kyrie Irving now is potentially gonna get traded by the trade deadline. There's all this pressure on the Brooklyn Nets to figure something out. And they're obviously gonna scramble to find the best deal possible. The thing is, as much as I wanna believe that he could potentially join the Lakers as a Laker fan. A part of me feels like this isn't going to happen without the Lakers ponying up a future first round pick. If you're the Brooklyn Nets, you're not going to accept anything less than that. So it's a gigantic game of leverage chicken between the Brooklyn Nets and the Los Angeles Lakers if they were to engage one another. Are the Lakers really willing to let the Kyrie Irving situation drag off into the offseason and just sign him outright? They have PTSD from doing this with Paul George in the 2017 season and Paul George even said it the Lakers could have came and got him. They could have traded for him, but they didn't. They elected to wait until free agency to sign him out right so they could keep their assets on top of that. And as a result, they never were able to get him. So you can make the same argument here for Kyrie Irving. The Lakers have the opportunity to get Kyrie Irving, but they're gonna have to give up one of their future first round picks. At the same time, the Brooklyn Nets aren't guaranteed to trade Kyrie to the Lakers or maybe other suitors. The Dallas Mavericks really want to add an additional playmaker next to Luka Doncic. They have significantly more assets than the Lakers do. Any team that has more assets than the Los Angeles Lakers could theoretically enter this race. And the Brooklyn Nets are going to be interested in trying to reload their assets as much as they possibly can because this team is absolutely depleted from the James Harden trade and not really getting that much value in return for him once they traded him to the Philadelphia 76ers. I mean, I guess you get a power forward that is really good taking it inside, but he's too scared to take it in because he's scared of getting fouled and he's terrified of shooting free throws. So I guess you get a guy that is good at passing the ball and playing defense. But apart from that, they didn't really get much from the James Harden trade. A lot of people think I have some sort of agenda against Kyrie Irving because of what he posted onto social media earlier this year. But I want you guys to know in this case, 
I'm 100% on his side. I mean, currently, there are teams that are also looking at Kevin Durant and wondering what Kevin Durant's future is going to be. Bear in mind, this is the number four seed in the Eastern Conference, and they're currently dealing with this right now. There's far more interest in inquiring on Kevin Durant's reaction to Kyrie Irving's trade request and how that may impact KD's future with the Nets. And we do know LeBron James's reaction. He tweeted that out as well. So my question to the Brooklyn Nets is what on God's green earth are you doing? I mean, you traded for James Harden. You you moved on from him one year later after giving up every single pick you could have potentially given up for this next decade. So you're all in on Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant, and now you're refusing to extend Kyrie Irving. This is what I mean when I say you're in a game of leverage chicken, because at the end of the day, I don't think Kyrie Irving wants to leave. I think Kyrie Irving wants a max contract extension and he's trying to squeeze the Brooklyn Nets into giving him one. So, and I'm surprised that the Nets didn't give in. It's very fascinating that they didn't give in, but I really want to know what their plan is if they do move on from Kyrie Irving. Do they try to trade Kevin Durant as well? What's the plan here? That's what I want to know. So let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about all this, man. Where do you think Kyrie's going to go? Aside from that, I'm your boy, Mike. I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.